Hey everyone, when it comes to salmon and steelhead fishing in BC, the most popular setup in rivers is definitely float fishing. Now, I've been asked by many people about how to set up a float fishing rig properly, so that's exactly what we're going to do in this video tutorial. My favorite rod and reel setup um, for float fishing rivers um, is a low profile bait casting reel and a fairly light uh, bait casting rod, 10.5 foot bait casting rod. Now, this is a Shimano Corrado. Uh, spool with 12 pound test monofilament line. You can go up to 15 or 20 pound, but personally I prefer 12 pound because I tend to target coho and steelhead. Um, for Chinook salmon, you want to go a little heavier. Now the fishing rod here, this is a G-Lumis IMX rod rated between 6 and 12 pound test. Again, this is a perfect rod for steelhead and coho. Um, you want one that's 10 and a half foot long or longer um, because flow fishing, it's good to have a long rod to keep the line off the uh, surface of the water um, for a better hook set, for better flow control as well. Um, so to set this up, it's pretty straightforward. So at the end of the main line, what you want to do, you want to put a couple of float stoppers on there. Now these float stoppers come in a package like that. So if you open this one up and they're basically little tiny pieces of rubber and to put it on you have these um, loops at the end of the wire and just thread your main fishing line through the loop and slide the rubber onto the fishing line so here you go two of them and this this rubber here can be slid up and down the fishing line and that is used to stop the float uh, you can use one stopper or you can use two. I tend to use two just so um, when this gets wet, you don't want this thing to be sliding. You'll, you'll start sliding around a little bit, but with two, um, you tend to stay pretty secured. So we're just gonna slide this one up a little bit, and then you're gonna use a sliding float. So we'll just pick one of these up. Uh, so float size, you can use uh, 10 gram, 15, 25, or 20, 25, and 30. Personally, 20 gram is a pretty standard one to go with um, for any type of salmon and steelhead fishing, simply thread this float, uh, thread the line through the float in the middle. So this is designed as a sliding float, it will slide up and down. And when it, when it goes in the water, it will slide all the way up to the float stopper up here and it will stop by the, by the uh, stoppers. Um, what I like to do is actually put two stoppers at the end as well. So you put another two stoppers on once you slide the uh, float onto the line, stoppers go on, and this sliding float now becomes a fixed float. So now this float doesn't move around. So you can, you can slide the stoppers up and down to adjust the depth. Um, the reason having these two stoppers at the end is when, if you do get a snag and if, if this breaks off, this float doesn't slide off the line and you end up losing the float because floats can be pretty expensive. Um, the other reason is I like to have my float fixed rather than sliding. Um, I find that well, um, it, it takes a couple more seconds for the line to slide up to the stopper um, to get your presentation down to the depth you want it. But if, with a fixed float, um, your presentation can get down to the depth um, right away without this being pulled back by the float. Now the float is fixed. What you need to do, you need, you need um, a bit of weight to balance the uh, float with. So this sliding weight is what I use. So you thread this on. The amount of weight you use um, depends on the size of the float. The larger the float, the more buoyancy it has. So the larger the weight you gotta use. You wanna use enough weight so that only the top section of the float is showing, the orange part is showing. This is your bite indicator. So the, when, the, when it sits in the water, and this top part is um, sitting on top of the water, when the fish bites, the the float gets pulled down, the orange part disappears, and that's when you know you have to strike the fishing line and hook the fish. So the weight goes onto the, uh, onto the main line, and then you put a bead onto the line as well below the weight. And then you just tie a swivel onto the line, onto the end of the main line. This bead is used to protect the swivel when the, when the uh, weight is slides down and hits the swivel. Um, so it doesn't damage the swivel, dam damage the knot actually that's attached to the swivel. Uh, simple uh, improved clinch knot, so six turns on the line. And put it through the loop that you created and put it on the second loop and then just pull. 
and make sure you wet a line as well. I'm not wetting here because we're not, we're just doing this as a demonstration. And then cut the tag off. And now that's your float setup. So you have a float, your weight to balance the float, your bead, and your swivel. Um, one thing you can do is you can, instead of using a swivel, you can use a snap swivel. So this way, if you want to change your leader, um, you can do so very easily simply by... Um, so here we have a leader you can, with a swivel at the end. You can just snap it onto the uh, snap swivel like so and close it and then it's ready to go. And you can just take this off and you want to change your presentation, take this leader off and put another leader on. It's pretty use, pretty handy uh, when you're fishing in colder water. You don't want to tie knots all the time, right? Now for the leader, we use fluorocarbon line instead of mono um, for several reasons. Uh, so one is it's a lot thinner than mono. Um, it's a little stiffer and it doesn't reflect light as much. So the fish can't see it as much. Um, so for the leader, I tend to go with um, so 10 pound, 12 pound test. Um, you want to go a little lighter than the main line just so that if you do get a snack, this is the one that's going to break off, not the main line. So you don't lose your weight, you don't lose your swivel, you don't lose your float. Um, so the length of the leader, um, I tend to go with anywhere from a foot long to two feet, no longer than that. Um, any longer than that, it, your line's not going to be very sensitive. So what's going to happen is, um, if you're using bait, if you're using row, it's pretty buoyant. Uh, it's going to start floating up. So if the bait starts floating up, you're not going to feel the bites as easily because there's a bit of a delay there. So the longer your leader is, um, the, the longer the delay is when you get a bite. Um, so you won't see the bite on the float until that leader is totally straight and the fish is pulling down. So one foot long to two feet is long enough. You don't have to worry too much about the fish seeing the weight because what happens is when this is drifting down the river, the, the hook tends to be a little further ahead of the weight. So um, the weight's not gonna, this tiny weight's not gonna scare the fish. So like I say, a foot long, two feet long, and at the very end, you can tie your hook on. And now I'm gonna show you how to tie my favorite knot onto this hook. So my favorite hooks to use over the years um, are these owner's um, needle point hooks. So this is the one that I've been using for many years. So size one, size one odd. Um, this is a new one that just came out, which is the uh, No Escape Barbless hook. Um, using owner's because they're very, very sharp. Don't cheap out on the hooks. These, um, these hooks are roughly around $20 per pack. Um, but it's well worth it because this is the only thing that's going to stick in the fish's mouth and you definitely don't want to be too cheap when it comes to this. Um, so the, the knot that I like to use on this, on the hook, is a bait loop. A bait loop meaning that you, you're going to form a loop to um, hold the bait together. If you're using a row, that's what you're going to use to hold the bait together. So it's pretty simple. So you have the end of the line. And you're putting, you have your hook positioned this way and you're going to form a loop like so and just turn this onto the, the hook like maybe six or seven times. So we're going to do six, seven times, maybe eight. The more turns you do, the larger the bait loop is going to be and you'll see why in a minute. So. So that's six, seven, eight, okay. So you have this line right here and you're gonna put this, the end of the line through the gap um, between the hook and this line and bring back and put it through this loop and just pull the line still, okay. Now the, the hook is tied on, but it's upside down right now, okay? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna cut this tag off, tagging off. We have our leader, and you're gonna thread the end of this leader through the eye of the hook. And now it's the right way up. And now you have a loop formed where you can hold your bait, such a roll or shrimp onto it or roll back onto it and that is your leader 
and that just goes on your swivel like that. Now for steel hair, you can use um, this variety of, um, of presentation you can use. You can use jigs, you can use tiny little spinners, you can use um, pink worms, you can use uh, single eggs. Uh, so it's, this is just a very standard setup, but definitely you want to play around with um, your presentations to catch fish. So there you have it. This is a very standard float fishing setup for steel and salmon. Um, if you have a different setup that you'd like to share with us, please leave it in the comment. And if you have any other, any other questions regarding this, um, please do so leave a comment or send us a message as well. And uh, good luck during the steelhead fishing season.